Welcome to More Than Mindset, the only podcast that bridges the gap between spirituality and success. Go beyond the mind with clarity and confidence coach Kim Guillory and learn how to integrate your passion to serve with your skills and experience to create a business you love. Let's get started. Welcome back to More Than Mindset. I'm Kim Guillory. I have a juicy one for you today. Can you believe I've been hosting this show for 286 weeks? That's crazy, right? That's a lot of weeks. I'm thinking about my intention whenever I started and how I actually achieved that. And then we've now moved into what it is today. So back however many years ago, that is, what's 50 divided by 286? It's been, what, three years, six years? Heck, I don't even know. Anyway, it's a long time. Whenever I first started, I remember I was really under, better understanding the mind-body integration or like what was happening in the physical body, what was happening like on the personal development side. And I was saying the same thing over and over. So I used this podcast as a way to not just articulate my understanding and my message, but I knew that my clients would be able to get the benefit from it. And so More Than Mindset was all about Yes, you can change your mindset, but it doesn't actually change your life. Changing your mindset is only one component. And as we've now evolved into this like ascension process of the More Than Mindset show, I've been talking more to coaches, holistic practitioners, and how they can use this content to help their clients, but also to help themselves. Because that originally was the very first intention is how can I help coaches and practitioners become better skilled? and better business owners. And so that's what I want to talk about today. We spend a lot of time as new coaches and practitioners just getting really good at our skill set because that's our first and foremost intention is how can I help more people? There's so much that we have learned in our own life that we've evolved from, that we've healed. And once you kind of come into this state of whole being or this holistic lifestyle, And you realize how far you've come, there is a natural like desire to want to help other people. And those are the clients that I help. They have been through their own stuff. They have a lot of experience. They've overcome and they have a deep desire to help. But there's one thing that's holding them back from helping more people. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. And that one thing is selling. I was on a call with client yesterday and this came up again there's this statement that I hear very very often I'm going to say it I'm sure you've heard it before and it is money is the root to all evil guys money is the access point to what you desire money is what allows you help and comfort and convenience. Money is not evil. There's nothing evil about money. Matter of fact, I think of it this way. Thoughts are like, thoughts are coming from the mental part of you. Like you just think, right? The mind thinks. The body emotes. You have sensation and feeling in your body. So the mind thinks, the body feels, and the material world evolves or is accessible through money. So money is the language of the material world. It's not bad. and It's not evil. And as long as we have that attitude or that mindset around feeling bad about money, it's going to be really hard to grow your business. Because business, the goal of business is to provide for yourself. It is to create something. It is to profit. Now you can have a nonprofit, but nonprofits even pay people to run them. So someone is still ultimately profiting from a nonprofit. And so I want to ask you to question your beliefs around money, because that is what's getting in your way of selling. If you do not become friends with money, if you don't allow money in your life, you're going to have a hard time 
like meeting your desire to serve because people on planet earth knows that it requires money. I tell this story of like sitting at the ballpark. Let's say you're at a football game or a basketball game, baseball game, and there's a little three-year-old and they want an ice cream, a, a snow cone from the concession stand. They go to their parent and ask for money. So even toddlers know how important and relevant money is. There is nothing evil around paying the concession stand for this blob of sugar that tastes really good. Money is an exchange for what you want. So I hope you understood that story. Everyone knows this is what I'm trying to tell you. Everyone, toddlers included. But when you have a resistance to receiving money or you have a negative understanding of money and that's in your way, then you're actually blocking the flow of getting what you want and what they want because it's the natural process. If I want something, I have to give something. So in the case of coaching or your healing service, whatever it is that you provide, if somebody wants that, then they know they have to give up something. They know they have to pay something. And you're standing here with the doors closed and you're saying, nope, can't pay me. It's evil. Money is evil. I can't receive money. Money is bad. It's wrong. It makes me selfish. And if I accept money, if I profit, if I benefit, then it's going to make me better than you. These are the kinds of things that people say, like, the, the judgment about people with money is coming from you. It is not true. It's coming from you. It's coming from what someone told you or your understanding around it or having like a negative bias around it. And like, I just want to demystify this for you so that you can position yourself to be able to receive money in order to give service. So I personally have fallen in love with the sales process because I actually see it as service. I think selling and coaching is the same thing. And I think serving and selling is the same thing. They're, they're, they're all on, they all have the same intention. Give me this so you can get that, right? So it's like, hire me and I will help you. And there's reciprocity in that. There's, there's commitment. There's promise. There's an understanding. There's a contract. But if you are the barrier to the money coming forward, you're the barrier to helping more people, to getting more clients. And so the reason that your business is not growing is because you're not able to receive. So once you understand that, now you've got to look at, okay, why? Do I struggle with receiving? What are my beliefs around money, around wealth? What are my thoughts around people who have more than me? And what about the people that you pay? What are your thoughts around those people? And so if you just start asking really curious questions and you start unpacking that, you'll have an understanding of why you've taken on this belief. Because it is a belief. It, it is not truth in any way, shape, or form. Matter of fact, it's more evil that we don't have money because then we will starve. We will not be well. We will not have a house. We won't have a cell phone. We won't be in communication with other people. We don't have, it's not even just the luxuries of life. It's necessities. You, can, you won't even have the necessities of life. And so if we can demystify this statement, money is the root of all evil. God, I just, I just can't understand it. Money doesn't make you happy. Money isn't everything. Have you heard those things? Which one of those is more impactful? Which one of those do you believe most? So you just want to write that down. And then where did you hear that? And what evidence do you have that that is true? So that's the assignment I want to give you for today's show to start really understanding where this is coming from because there is an unconscious bias around it. And so that is getting in the way of the desire that's most important to you. So it is your duty and obligation 
to investigate this for yourself, for the quality of your life, but also to grow your business and to be in service and help other people. Because once you have this change, the quality of your life has changed, the, your relationships, your health, and you seeing things differently, you're a different person, but you're still carrying old beliefs. So can you see how that could be confusing? So it's like you're a different person, but you still identify. And that's the thing that you have to cut away is the identification. And the way to do that is to go through investigation so that you can understand. Once you can understand, you can consciously choose. Because right now, you're unconsciously choosing it. You don't even know that it's happening. You just know that you're struggling to get clients. You just know that you're struggling to make more money, right? And so it's like you're trying to solve the wrong problem. You think that you have a marketing issue. But the truth is, if you're really good at sales, you can get away with not being great at marketing. I'm proof of that. I'm really good at sales because I believe selling is helping them get what they want. So selling the snow cone at the ball game is helping the toddler get what they want. And so if the person who's working there won't take the money, the toddler can't have what they want. Does that make sense? It's an exchange. But you are the one preventing the exchange from happening and you are the, also the one who has the desire to help. So that's the dissonance or that's the conundrum that's happening that's making this so confusing. So if you understood what was blocking you, then you would understand what to do next. And that is to learn the sales process and to also change your perception around selling around money, around your beliefs of money or the whole BS about money won't make you happy. One doesn't have anything to do with the other. Money is a necessity to live on planet Earth. And so if you have healed yourself from all these physical conditions, from limiting beliefs, from everything else, it's just know that this is just the next thing to heal yourself from. And it's to release the idea that there's not enough, that if someone has it, it'll take away from someone else, that it's bad or evil, or it's going to separate you from other people, or that it's... It, some people think like they're choosing money over helping. And it's, it's simply not true. It's and I'm receiving money so I can help. They're one thing. It's just a cycle that is complete. Does that make sense? So whenever you don't receive or you have negativity around it and you block it, you prevent the cycle for you and for them. So you're not helping anyone. You're surely not helping yourself, helping your family. And you're not helping your client, you're not helping society. So those beliefs, if you're willing to challenge, those beliefs can be cut away. And then you can take on a new set of beliefs around money and about the quality of your life and the lives that you can impact for other people. Just because you were willing to question that belief, you're willing to cut it away, and then you're willing to do something different. Because those are the steps, right? You got to choose. Then you got to commit. So you think, I choose to grow a business helping people heal. Or I choose to grow a business that I love, that creates revenue, that supports my family. That's the first thing. You just got to choose it. What is it that you want? The second thing is I'm committed to myself, to my family, to the clients, to the people that I'm going to serve. I'm committed to humanity, to my soul's purpose, but I'm committed. And then you cultivate as if it were, which means you are taking the actions as if the thing that you want is already here. So it's like you're doing it from a future perspective. So I am the person who easily receives money. I am the person who serves lots of people because I have the ability to receive money. Money is a great thing. Money helps many people. Money creates convenience and luxuries and also necessities. I pass on positive money beliefs to my children and to my community. Like that would be a different take, right? So you're cultivating from that perspective. And then you have to cut away those thoughts that come in that you heard when you were young or when you were in church or whoever said that he was evil or bad or whatever the interpretation was. When you hear it, you just say, that's not true. And you come back to the new thought. That's not true. And come back to the new thought. And then you got to continue doing that every day, multiple times a day, because the mind learns through repetition. And the last and final step 
many people miss is you have to have conversation with someone that you had a previous agreement with. It might be yourself. It might be your partner. It might be your children. It might be your parents, someone in your community. Maybe it's your pastor. But there is a conversation of you, like, I am different. I have changed. I've changed my opinion and my beliefs. This is no longer true for me. And this is what I'm going to be doing. Because you're creating new contracts. Because you had an old contract. Even though you didn't have a conversation about it, you weren't in communication, you actually were communicating with yourself on an unconscious level and you created that contract with yourself and with the people that are in your life. And so that last step is you're willing to have the conversation so that you can be in communication with a part of yourself. So you got to first get clean with yourself. And then when you are going to start making these changes, it's going to disrupt your relationships. So maybe you've been giving away free things and you're suddenly going to charge. Maybe you've been undercharging and you're now going to value the service and you're going to go up on the price. Whatever it is, you have to have a conversation. Be in communication. And the way to be in communication is to first agree. So you're like, I know it's been this way. I know I've done that. I know this is what we agreed upon for. So it's like you're getting into agreements first. And then from here on out, the price is going to be. And it may be talking to yourself. From here on out, I am going to be friend money. We're going to be friends. I'm going to love money. I'm going to see the value of money. I'm going to change my perception of money. You're talking to yourself, talking to your partner, talking to your kids and parents. This is how it's going to be now. I have now taken responsibility. I've taken responsibility for what I believe around money because that experience was my experience and I don't want to keep experiencing that. So I am changing now. So I'm just letting you know, this is how it's going to be. So you have that with, your, with yourself, you have that with others. And then that's the whole entire cycle. Choose, commit, choose, cultivate, put away the old, continue with the new, of the conversation with whoever you need to be in communication with, letting them know about the changes that you are now going to integrate and embody in your life and become. That's it. That's the process. So if you are willing to change your beliefs around me, you will grow your business. And we have um, a sales workshop coming up. I would love to invite you to. We'll put a link. So if you're interested. Because we teach a sales process that is really be about being in communication. And it's not icky, it's not sales scripty, it's not weird. Although you will first learn process and the script so that you can get the understanding of it. And that is going to give your like give you the how. Because there is a how to this. You do have to learn how to sell. Selling is a skill set. And it's a skill set that will grow your business beyond any marketing, I promise you, because sales, like when you truly sell yourself first and then you make yourself available to receive and you sell people on what they want and you deliver, you've got lifetime clients. You will definitely grow your business. So that's what I have for you this week. Really do the investigation around the beliefs that you do have, where you got those from. If they're still true for you today, do some journaling, map it out, maybe have some conversations with people who were in agreement with you about money being bad or wrong. Just question it. And I don't want to make a promise, but I'm going to make a promise. I promise you, if you release that, it will open you up for more clients coming into your business naturally. Have a great week. Make sure you share this with someone else share it on social media, give us a rating and review. I would love to hear from you if you just respond to wherever you're watching or listening to this and tell me if it was effective. Thanks for listening to this episode of More Than Mindset. 